me a second. You cannot minimize when you are recording this meeting. Maybe I should have. Okay, I still can get the audio from here. Yeah, let's go. What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Spoken Truth Podcast Live Edition. I go by the name of Danny. I'm tuned in. And today we are getting you set for game five of the NBA Finals, featuring the Golden State Warriors and the Boston Celtics. The series is now a best of three. Tunde, what are your initial thoughts going into this game five? And he sips. <laughs> Good as always. All right. Let's get to it. My initial thoughts uh, going into game five. First of all, like this, we just got to stop and appreciate what we're getting to watch right now. Like it's just high level basketball all over the place. Mm-hmm. Like watching Steph Curry, like we're, we're lucky that we get to watch these guys do what they do. Mm-hmm. And at the level that we get to watch them at. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know for me personally, after, you know, at the basketball world lost Kobe Bryant, you know, I really, you just want to stop and smell the roses, you know, with these with these athletes while we have them. Um, mm-hmm. And while we get to watch them do what they do. Uh, so that's my first thought. Um, I, I think I think my second thought is just... <laughs> I just it's just to laugh at some of the shots that Steph is making. Um, hey man, he is he is a brilliant basketball player. Not that you know, obviously that's not something I had any questions about. But you know, mm-hmm. um, I think there was always this was always going to be a thing where there was always going to be a game or two where you know he was going to just do that, and there wasn't going to be shit you could do about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously, you know, that's what we got in game four. And a game the Warriors really should have lost. Um, they didn't because Steph Curry is on on their team and the other team doesn't have Steph Curry. Sometimes it's that simple. Um, Andrew Wiggins was huge for the last game on the boards, uh, especially, you know, the rebounding was a huge plus. Uh, got them lots of um, kind of filled in the gaps, you know, space the floor. Got them some garbage buckets. Mm-hmm. Um, the Draymond thing is tough because, I mean, I think we can all see he is mightily struggling as far as scoring is concerned. Um, with that being said, uh, he was big in the fourth quarter when he did play. Was absolutely phenomenal on the defensive end. Um, and for everybody who's saying, why aren't the, aren't the Celtics just, you know, blitzing? the the curry pick and roll every time he's got the ball um they did once in the last game with about a minute left it was it, it immediately turned into a layup for Kavon Looney and a lot of that is because of Draymond Green that Draymond did what they've done for the last eight years he short rolled once he saw the pick Steph hit him he turns he's got a four and three he's probably the best player in the NBA one of the best, if not the very best in the NBA at reading that exact situation um, because they've got so much experience doing it because they've seen that coverage so many times over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so those are, those are kind of my, um, those are kind of my initial thoughts. I don't really, I know we're going to get into, you know, potential adjustments a, a, a little bit later. So I guess I'll say what some of what I have to say for them, but those are kind of my initial thoughts. The mostly based on what the Warriors did well in the last game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, for me, looking at Game Four in comparisons to what we can potentially see tonight is the pressure building for both teams, in my opinion. Um, Curry potentially had his greatest Finals performance in his career. Um, in game four and like you said I agree with you Um, they needed every single one of those points from Curry to win that game Um, Steph by far it's not even close he's the best player in this series um, by a lot and I don't think I don't to be fair I don't think anybody had that question coming in yeah uh, yeah but it, it shows on the court 
uh, it just shows that he is on operating right now at an all time level that we've never seen him operate in, in these pressure situations. So, you know, having 43 and 10, you look at that and you're like, okay, he has 43, he has 10 rebounds. But what is so appalling to me is the percentage. I mean, he's shooting 49% from three and he's shooting 50% from the field. I mean, that is asinine. Like, he is obviously the number one targeted person on offense and defense. And Boston literally cannot do anything to stop him. We all know who's going to be the main person in action. We all know who the offense and defense is geared to stop. And Boston literally on the defense end can do nothing with Steph Curry. So I don't know. My takeaways from this game is if he continues to have this type of splurge like he's doing, I don't see how Boston win game five. I don't see how Boston, with the play, we're going to get into Jason Taylor a little later, with the play of Jason Taylor right now, he's obviously take a step back from previous series in the playoffs this year. Um, he's not the same in the finals. Right now, Jalen Brown is arguably their best player. And no. go ahead. No. Jalen Brown, <laughs> Brown is arguably their best player. No, I, it, it, no. it, it, he's arguably their best player. And I mean, if you guys don't know by now, like me and Tunde, we rarely agree on anything. He's scoring the ball more. Scoring isn't the only. No, thing I'm not. No, I just, I just think he's making more, more impactful plays in this series than Jason Tatum is. He's just and, scoring the ball more. Jay, no, I'm, Jason I'm not, Tatum I'm, is, is playing great defense, and legit Jason Tatum is creating like four. Jason Tatum is legit creating like half of the Celtics point, like a ton of the Celtics points, half being, you know, I'm stretching. The I mean, but they're turning him into that. It's not, it's not Jason Tatum willingly taking, willingly, willingly taking that. Golden State is turning him into that. It's sure, a difference. It's a yeah, difference. Yeah, that's fine. If if you are playing basketball and you mm-hmm. attack the rim and you have three bodies in front of you. And you've got a forty, you got a forty-two percent three-point shooter in the corner. You should pass the ball to the corner every time. That's, what, that's a what, good decision. But, that's good but the thing that I'm, the thing that I'm trying to understand is, the Warriors are not double teaming, triple teaming Tatum like you keep saying that they are. But that's the thing, so right? most of the time they're playing him straight up with Wiggins. But but that's the thing. He's not he's not only getting Wiggins on him. He's gotten some switches, and that's something that the obviously Celtics, that's the Warriors' defense. Yeah, yeah, and the Celtics are hunting out specific switches. We know that Steph Curry, Jordan Poole in particular. Mm-hmm. But he's making advanced reads out of pick and roll. They are committing multiple bodies to him. Um, mm-hmm. Ultimately, because when he gets in the lane, that's a lot of what's happened, and that's where a lot of offense is coming from. You know, mm-hmm. obviously we all saw the thirteen assists in Game One, but he's been passing at a really high level. This but whole that series. won't get it done. That won't get it done. Him See, pass, him getting 13, 15 assists will not get it done. If the ball goes in the basket, the ball goes in the basket. The, him that, getting 15 assists, him getting 15 assists, and him him continuing to average, he's averaged 22.3 points right now. He's averaging the same thing as Jalen Brown. They're both averaging around 22, the same thing. If he continues right. on, if he continues on that path, the Celtics are not winning. See, I don't. I, I don't. I, They're not I, winning. I, like if he, I, if he continues to have these subpar games where he's getting 15 assists. I mean, granted, he's he's doing. He's having career career. He's 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 continuing to have building up the career in assists. I get that, but pertaining to everything else, the impact on a game and scoring and doing in a variety of other ways. If he continues to have this type of impact, the Celtics are not going to win, especially if you have Curry really playing the way he's playing. Curry, you crazy. have to match him. You're just, but you're just talking about scoring because he's playing defense at an extremely high level as well. He's he's locked in on that end. He's guarding. Obviously, the communication is really good. Switching. He's rebounding the ball at a really high level as well. Like when you're saying impacting the game and all these and, and a number of other ways, I, I you're just talking about scoring. It's like just looking at the box score and saying he shot eight for twenty three. He played bad, but like. That's that's not the only thing that that's not so, the only thing that matters in, in basketball. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not team, saying it is, but I'm saying, are you saying if this if he continues to play like this, Boston will win? 
I'm not saying I'm not saying any of that one way or another. What I'm saying is that all I'm saying is that J Jason Tatum, the whole thing with Jason Tatum playing horribly is okay. Is far over. How would you rate on a scale of one to ten? How would you rate his final so far? Scale of one to ten? I don't know. A, a seven? That's that's insane. That is in, that is insane. Because you think it that is insane? No, that is insane. Ready a seven? Sure. You think what what you on on your scale? You think it should be a three or something like that? On, on my scale, it's like a four or a five. Sure. At best. Right. I mean, we we're of course we're going to agree to disagree here, but I'm yes, saying sir. if he if he continues to play like this, Boston will lose. That's that's I, all I'm I, saying. I, I just, because no I, one's I would... matching Steph. Who's matching Steph on that team? He is their best player. He cannot match Curry. I'm not expecting him to match him in points or anything like that. But you cannot score 22 when he's averaging 22. He has to get it done on the offensive end. There's there's no other way around it. The thing, like, you're, you're, you're just talking about scoring. Like offense is more than just scoring too. <laughs> like I, I don't I don't think we should, I don't think you should look at this as a, as a in the, from the standpoint of like you have to like you have to match Steph point for point because that's saying not, that. I'm not saying that. But like that's but who, like, that, it's it's all, it's unclear who's boss the best player. It's it's clear. It's strikingly unclear. It's clear I mean, by the way the Warriors are choosing to guard them. Part of the reason that Part of the reason that Jalen Brown is having, that like they're okay, go ahead. Part of the reason that Jalen Brown is having success <laughs> scoring the ball in the first place. They're not guarding him, huh? No, it's not that they're not guarding him. The Warriors have one wing defender in this series who they clearly trust to get stops. Right? They clearly know who the best defender is, who they have on the wing is, and mm -hmm. they know it's Andrew Wiggins. Who is Andrew Wiggins? Who's been Andrew Wiggins' primary assignment this whole Damn. series? They haven't changed that at all, right? No, that tells you who they think the best player is, because it's obvious to them, and it's obvious to the rest of us. Get what I'm saying, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown is scoring part at the clip he's scoring at, partially because Jason Tatum gets the bulk of the defensive attention, and then Jalen Brown gets people in front of him who can't guard him, like Clay Thompson, like Otto Porter Jr., etc. But et now you're saying it's Golden State choosing. To let to stop Jason Taylor instead of Jalen Brown. Okay, they are choosing to focus the bulk of their of the defensive attention on Jason Tatum. Okay. Yes, they aren't choosing to let Jalen Brown score because you don't just choose to let anybody score. But you know they're choosing to guard. They're choosing to. They're, they're choosing their best perimeter defenders and their best wing guys specifically to guard Jason Tatum. Yes, they are. I don't know. That, I, I can make a legit argument that if the Celtics win this championship, Jalen Brown will be MVP. I I think Jalen Brown probably will win MVP because people because you know he's gonna have the better numbers. He's been the best player scoring standpoint. He's been the best player for, through four games. Sure, that is fine. We will agree to disagree. With <laughs> he's been I, don't there, I don't even think it's close. He's been your best player by far in the first four yeah. games. Um, yeah, this will this will be in a, again. We'll just have to agree to disagree on this one. I think most people, to be fair, I think most people would agree with you on this one. I just don't agree. Absolutely, because I'm right. You know, I'm I'm nine times out of ten, I'm I'm rarely wrong. Like nine point five out of ten, like it's only a point five percentage that I'm actually wrong. Like when so, you say Clay Thompson should shoot less, and then yeah, I, I, yeah, I still think he should shoot. Yeah, absolutely. And then Clay I Thompson say, responded say, by shooting. I like didn't say. From I did not guys. say he should shoot less. I say he needs to take better shots. He needs to have a better shot selection. I didn't say he needs to shoot less. I say he needs to have. He needs to take better quality shots. Is it? He shot the same shots. It's a difference. In, in, it's a difference. He shot the same shots in game three and. Uh, it's a difference. In game three and four that he took in one and two, and he just made more of them. There wasn't a difference in the um, shot. Mm, mm. He takes. He was shots. rushing. He was rushing in game one through three. In my Clay opinion. Thompson takes tough shots that like ninety nine percent of the rest of the NBA shouldn't take. That's always been his shot selection. Clay he Thompson takes, take better shots tonight. He takes difficult ass shots and makes a lot of them because he's not like everybody else. He's special. Uh, he gets to he gets to take those. <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> Tunde, guys, Tunde has a lot of time to talk tonight. Um, I always do. <laughs>
So we're going to get all of his point of views across. He's going to get everything across. Um, headed into game five tonight. I mean, yeah, game five tonight. We wanted to touch on the Celtics defense. Uh, what are some adjustments you think the Celtics defense can make pertaining to Steph Curry? What can they do? Uh, another controversy. Right. I don't think there's a ton of adjustments to make. He made a lot of tough shots. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's a ton of stuff you really – are going to be able to do with that. Uh, I think that they won, they eked out that game with him scoring 43 points and making a bunch of super tough ones. I think you're just going to live with that. Uh, like everyone keeps complaining about the drop coverage. And theoretically, I understand why on it, their face you would complain about that uh, because it feels like you're just letting Steph shoot pull up threes. The reality of the situation is the Warriors have been forced into a place that they really don't want to be in, which is that they're not generating consistent offense through anything that isn't high pick and roll. They don't want to run high pick and roll. That is not how Steve Kerr wants to play basketball. They are having to do it as a consequence of Boston getting them to this point because the sets that they normally run are not working. They're not getting clean looks. Boston is switching everything, mucking it up. And the fact that the Warriors are, you know, still do play a decent amount of minutes with two non-scores on the floor means that the court is just super shrunk. Mm -hmm. um, and so as a consequence of that, the Warriors have had to go a lot more high pick and roll. So out of that, you're seeing more Steph pull-ups because, um, you know, Boston plays is playing, you know, they're still playing a bit of a drop coverage, but it's not the same as before where you were seeing the big drop way back. The big is a lot closer to being at the level of the screen which puts him in a better place to contest. Uh, we're seeing Steph Curry make great shots, and he's going to do some of that. I, I do think as far as just a pure adjustment, one of the things, and I think uh, everybody watch out for this tonight, I think we'll see some of this, is that we'll see some blitzing of uh, ball screens. Uh, with that being said, I don't think we're going to see, or at least I don't think we should see Boston blitz the ball screen if Draymond is the one setting the screen it's going to result in an open shot if it's Draymond. I think you want to blitz the screen if they're setting the screen with, like, Gary Payton the second. Um, and then make him be a playmaker. I think he's capable of it. But, you know, force him to show you that part of your skill set, and then you can kind of go from there. So if it's, like, GP2, you can go do that. I honestly wouldn't really blitz it with Kevon Looney either. I um, personally really like Kevon Looney's playmaking don't know that you want to put him in that situation either this is why it's tough i mean you've got them to the point where they like want if you got them to the point where like they need one guy to score 45 points to win the game i don't know how sustainable the model that is for winning to be honest even as even as you know spectacular as that is. um i agree with almost everything you said the, but the only part that i push back on is that Boston has blitzed Steph a total of four times in four games. Steph Curry's too good. You have to blitz him more. I don't know how that affect. At the end of the day, I don't know how that will affect the Warriors' offense. I know uh, Boston do not want to blitz him as often as people think they should. But Steph Curry can beat you. If he scores 45 tonight, they're winning the game. And now you're in a whole different state than you were in almost a week ago, where it seemed like that you were clearly – obviously, I still believe Boston is clearly the better team. Boston is by far the better team on the court from, yes. from top to bottom. Steph Curry is just by far overwhelmingly the best player on the court. And if you're going to continue – to play the best player on the court like that, he will beat you again and again and again and again. He did it in game four. They chose to stick to their guns and play the type of defense that got them to this point when they, when they went against Giannis, when they went against Kevin Durant, when they went against Jimmy Butler. Let's talk about those three teams. When they played against Brooklyn, of course, Kevin Durant, is an all-time great scorer. Of course, Kyrie is an all-time great scorer and shot maker, both of them. But they got up in Kevin Durant. They blitzed him. Not only did they blitz Kevin Durant, but majority of the time, 
Jason Tatum was the sole defender on Kevin Durant, and it locked him down. Let's move over to Giannis. Giannis did not have Chris Middleton. They forced Giannis seamlessly to a perimeter player, which we know is not his strength. They basically said, Giannis, you have to beat us from the perimeter. You cannot come in the paint. And if you did, you were inefficient. Although he still shot, I believe, 45% from the, from the field, but that's still 5% down from where he usually shoots. Especially if that's your bread and butter and you cannot get to that point where you're actually having a positive impact on your team, that's how you lose. And Boston did a great job adjusting to what Milwaukee strengths and what Milwaukee wanted to do, and they took that away. When they played against Miami, Jimmy Butler was literally the lone act in that series. Jimmy Butler was the best player in that series, but he could not beat them himself because of the defense that they played the series went back and forth. It was a, to me, it was a pick them. I eventually went with Miami at seven. No, thinking that they would have some pieces to go along with Jimmy Butler. Obviously, that won the case. Now you're going up against Golden State. Golden State has Steph Curry, who is by far better than Jimmy Butler by all accounts. So if you're going to play that same way, like you did with Miami, like you kind of did with Milwaukee, like you kind of did to a lesser degree with Brooklyn, you are going to lose because Jordan Poole has yet to have a huge impact on the series. Clay Thompson is yet to have a huge impact on the series. Draymond Green hasn't played a single great game in these NBA finals. I, I, the Clay Thompson thing is Clay Thompson was huge for them in game four. Yeah, I believe I believe Clay Thompson he, down the stretch and in the fourth quarter where he made he had those eight points before Steph Curry even made his first basket. Those two threes were 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 definitely needed because that put Golden State up by one. The second one I believe put Golden State up by one, and then from there Steph Curry scored ten points in a quarter, five from the free throw line, and that was all she wrote. So Clay Thompson had a huge impact on game four, but we haven't saw game six play yet. And even besides that, and even besides that, he was huge defensively on Jalen Brown down the stretch in game four. Jalen Brown kept going at him. Um, And for, you know, all the success that Brown has had scoring on him in this series down the stretch of game four, Clay Mm -hmm. got stops, Clay contained the ball, Clay kept him in front of him. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's huge. Clay, Clay can play better. That's my thing. Uh, Clay can play. Clay can play. Game six play is yet to be, you know, the Clay, game six Clay impact is yet to be seen in this series. And I believe it's coming. Fair enough. Uh, I think, I mean, I think you can, that's fair enough. I mean, the, this, the Warriors have scored at about the same clip in every game this series. Yeah. So they haven't won every game this series. No. The point is that's literally one. They're plus one in points. They're about even. Like I said before, this these these finals are about as evenly matched as you could possibly get as far as the expectations of both teams. I I just the Celtics the Celtics have basically just turned have basically turned the Warriors offense into whatever they can get in the hodgepodge of whatever they can get out of pick and roll. They're in a they're in a very good place. The issue, honestly, is a lot more to do with what Boston's done on the other side of the court on offense. And that's where they won or lost games. In the last game, uh, down the stretch, you know, they kept attacking ISO and kept trying to just attack ISO as opposed to, you know, I think it would have been easier for them if they were able to dress up, if they were able to dress up uh, what they wanted to do with, like, I don't know, simple two-man action. They had a lot of success with – Marcus Smart and and Jason Tatum like two man action and then getting Jason Tatum downhill, mm-hmm. some of that would work or like off ball screens where they were just where you know you're switch hunting but instead of hunting the switch where you're using the on ball screen maybe you set a pin down and you have whoever's guarding Jordan Poole set the pin down with the expectation that that's going to be a switch and then from there you can you know work on the switch hunting where you're probably going to get Jordan Poole coming who's going to switch on that screen matched up with one of your primary scorers whether that's Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown but they didn't do any of that they just gave Jalen Brown the ball and was like here go um 
and they struggled I, with that. And they had they had some of the same issues in game two. Like they're not losing these games because of what's happening on defense. It's the other side of the floor. Um, they had, just have to be more efficient with the looks they're generating, especially in the fourth quarter. I agree um, with that last point that they're also losing this series on the offensive end. Uh, because their ability to make shots down the stretch, particularly in the last two games, well, they actually they won game three, but game four, they, their inability to make those shots cost them that game. Uh, they still would, I, to me, they still would have won if they were able to hit shots despite Steph Curry having an historic night, because I believe they have overall a better roster. But if I'm the Warriors, if I'm the Warriors, I have to love this, and I'm explaining why. I have to love where I'm at right now. It's 2-2. Two, two. I have two more games at home if it goes seven. I have to love this situation because Boston has yet to make a single defensive adjustment on Steph Curry. They haven't made a single adjustment. You're going to continue giving an all-time great player a steady diet of the same thing. You're not going to win. You're not going to win. So if I'm going to state, I'm like, okay, they're going to continue to play us like this. Okay. They're not going to make any type of adjustments. Okay. We're going to beat you at the game that you want to play. Because Boston, at the end of the day, I picked Golden State to win this series, and I picked them in seven. And a lot of people have Boston. I know you have Boston winning in six. Um, But if Boston lose this series, to me, it's going to go back – if they don't make an adjustment, it's going to go back and say they showed Steph Curry a steady diet for seven or six consecutive games, and they did nothing to stop it. That's going to be the reason. I, I think for me, it's just like the reason you don't like everyone is everyone. It's like it's funny. We keep being like, ah, Draymond Green is having so many issues scoring. Like Jordan Poole hasn't made an impact on this series, but like there's a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's been part of what the that's part of what the defensive coverage is like the, the despite are, those despite them despite them i'm saying sure, but the, you, the, the warriors you continue to show steph curry a steady diet and he continues to go for 40 45 50 somebody's going to eventually come to the party you are going to lose you're going to lose <laughs> I'm just, just, I, I just like it can't you're not gonna have it both ways here where you're not gonna have it both ways where Steph Curry who is you know himself is gonna quote unquote struggle or you're gonna take the ball out of his hands mm-hmm. and then you're gonna let the Warriors you're gonna blitz let them play four on three or do a lot of the other pro- coverages that people are proposing mm-hmm. and then and then Draymond Green's going to get look great because he's going to get to do the stuff that he's great at, which is play make and, 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 you know, make reads in space, make advanced reads in space. Like that's not what you want. Mm-hmm. That's not, that's not really what you want. Like what they're doing right now is has caused basically everybody else's water to be shut off, uh, you know, outside of Steph Curry making tough shots. And in fairness, he's doing it. It's not like they're playing drop coverage where the big is standing in the paint, the drop coverage they're playing right now is with the big being like, being like a step below where the screener is. There's not a ton of room in there for step to launch. You know, it's step. I don't expect to see significant defensive changes, nor do I think we should see significant defensive changes. What they're doing is working fine, fine and dandy. It's, I think you might get a few possessions I think you might get a few possessions where they run a slow, where they like spontaneously, you might spontaneously get a trap or you might spontaneously getting something like that. But it's not like they're just dropping the big, like they're switching Al Horford, especially on a lot of these possessions. So like, it's not like it's just one pick and roll coverage anyway. Yeah. And, yeah. and ultimately, like if the goal, if like ultimately if what you're making happen is one person has to beat us and one person has to be basically like Steph was basically perfect in game four. If the if the you're if you're making the other team's offense come down to one person has to be perfect for this to work, you know, 
at some point in time, that's that's, at some point in time, that won't be the case. And all I'm saying is you keep saying that their game plan is work, working perfect. Steph just had his greatest finals performance in his career. It's not working perfect. And if those guys who have the ability to launch shot, Clay can go for eight threes at any time. Jordan Poole can open the lid and start hand shots at any time. Steph Curry, if, if all of those guys get going, opens the floor more, Boston is in trouble. But, but they're not getting going for a reason. <laughs> it's not like okay, it's not well, accidental that yeah, they're struggling. We have to we have to move on because we're running out of we're running out of time. Uh I wanted to touch on Jason Tatum and his play in these NBA finals. Now we know we obviously do not agree. I've said Jason Tatum has been subpar right now in the first four games in these finals. You said he's play he's playing okay or you play he's playing great. Can you explain your position not quite for our great. audience? You said yeah, not I agree. Sure, I don't think he's playing great. I think great would be him doing all the other stuff, plus scoring, you know, more efficiently and making shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I just I I do not subscribe to this theory that Jason Tatum is somehow playing is playing awful basketball right now. I agree that you. I don't think that's all. That's I don't think he's playing awful. I I agree that he needs to. I agree that you know shoot the ball better. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to be fair, he's cl- like his shoulder is clearly not right. It's clearly bothering him. Um, we're in the NBA Finals though, and nobody's gonna sing. Nobody's gonna, you know, play the world's tiniest violin for you. You got to figure out a way to make it happen. Um, we already building an excuse for him. What did I just say? Well, what were the last words that came yeah, out of my mouth? We already built an excuse for him. I know what you said. All right, so you know, it's you know, the NBA everyone else that listened to you is going to say, oh, yeah, he was hurt. Yep. I mean, all right. It's the NBA Finals, so ultimately, you know, figure it out, make it happen. Uh, I get all that. Um, but ultimately, if you're if you're watching Jason Tatum, you're seeing really, really, really high-level defense from him. You're seeing right now what looks like elite playmaking. He's consistently hitting people, you know, Ball in, ball in the shooting pocket uh, for clean looks and, and spot up guys. Uh, you're seeing him rebound the ball at a high level. You're seeing him do a lot of the stuff that you need to, to win outside of scoring 30 points a game. It would be great if you got, you know, him scoring 30 points a game. Um, and, you know, probably something you really want to see. But ultimately, I like the reason why this this whole thing is where it is in Boston is at the point that they're at in this series, where realistically, you know, they won game one, they won game three, they should have won game four. Um, the reason that they're at that point is because Jason Tatum is is because of Jason Tatum. It is primarily because of Jason Tatum. So I just don't agree with that assessment. I I. We'll say it again. I believe Jalen Brown has been their best player by far in this series. Uh, if the finals, if they were somehow to win the finals, even if Jay, Jason Tatum went for 30, you know, in the next two games, I believe Jalen Brown will be MVP. He's been the more consistent, the more impactful, in my opinion, player for the Boston Celtics. Now, obviously, Jason Tatum is the best player. Like, that's not what I'm arguing here, but I'm saying – to me, the most valuable player has been Jalen Brown. Um, and obviously, I still can make an argument that if you can go Jalen Brown or just him, whatever the case may be, I'm just talking about for this series, Jalen Brown has been the most consistent and the better player. Um, again, I don't want to be on this drum and I'm saying that Jason Tatum is not playing great. I think he's playing fine. I just think he needs to have a more impactful presence on the offensive end. He's playing well on defense. Um He's, he's limiting the Warriors to practically one or two shots. Um, they're taking them out of their rhythm, as you can see. Uh, Golden State is not being able to move the ball like we normally accustomed seeing them doing because of the way that the Boston, are playing, Boston is playing their defense. That's primarily responsible of Marcus Martin and Jason Tatum. Um, but to me, in order for them to win this series, he's going to have to step up on the other end of the floor. Um, he's yet to have a standout game where I believe he's the sole reason why they won. Uh, even when they won game one, uh, I have to credit Al Horford. I have to credit Marcus Smart. I have to credit that bench more than I have to credit him. Um, 
just because they were the ones that were hitting those shots. Although you could say he was putting them in positions to do that, yes. it wasn't him taking those shots. Um, that that's is that's still a difference. But I still credit him because he still had thirteen assists. He ended up with twelve points, but we're going to focus on the assist total. Um, but I just think he needs to be more impactful on the on the offensive end. If he continues to play like he's playing on the offensive end. Boston will not win this series. I don't care what defensive coverage you're going to do at Golden State. Because eventually, Clay Thompson is going to turn into game six Clay. And Jordan Poole is going to come to the, he's going to come to the party. They're going to have some baddies in the front row. And he <laughs> and won one of these games. They're going to have some baddies in the front row. And he's going to go for 25. I promise the you. NBA finals. I'm sure there's some <laughs> baddies in the front row at every game. They had every game. So to me, I think the pressure is on Boston to win this game. Um, I think Golden State, uh, Golden State, if they win this game and it's icing on the cake, uh, they have to win one of the next two. I think Boston cannot afford to lose this game. It's uh, a two-two series, though. I, the, absolutely, the but, on everybody, but everyone also, is in the same place. But yeah, but I also think the tra- the trajectory of Golden State being able to go, and we've seen Boston win Game Sevens, but we haven't yeah. seen. Boston perform this version of this team in a finals game seven. It's a difference. It's a difference. This is the NBA finals. This is not the playoffs. This is not the like, Easter conference finals. This is not the, the semi. This is the NBA finals. It's just a different level of anxiety and uh, nerves and everything. So I don't think Boston wants to get to that point of having to go to a game seven. So Ideally, they take care of business a game five and six. But if somehow they were to lose this game tonight, the confidence of me picking the Warriors goes up a hundred and six percent. Because I don't, I don't think, I don't. If go, if Golden State wins tonight, I think they close out in six. Um, which we're going to make our picks. To, we're going to make our picks in a second. But that's just my opinion on that. But I wanted to get your thoughts on the, the players that need to step up on both teams. Who do you think needs to – let's start with Boston. Who do you think needs to step up on this Boston Celtics team in order to get a game five victory? Sure. I mean, for Boston, I think it's on Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. I think that both of them offensively have to be better. Mm-hmm. Uh, both of them offensively have to be better in, in uh, the down the stretch of games. You guys have already heard me touch on this a little bit. Uh, I think part of this is with the coaching staff, you can make their lives a little easier. Run some two-man game, run some really basic sets, and then you can attack the switches that you get out of there. Spread, And that'll spread the floor, and that'll make it a little easier because it'll spread the floor, and you aren't just getting people lined up in front of you ready to stop you. Um, but ultimately, I mean, I think we all know that that's where the ball is going to go. By the time you've hit, you know, the fifth game in a series and you've got it 2-2 like this, uh, you know, both teams have have basically made the adjustments that they're going to make for the series. Like we've, and that's part of what's going to make these next two to three games so fun. We know what both teams want to do. They've made it really clear what they want to do, how they feel comfortable beating the other team. And it's just going to come down to who executes that better. Mm -hmm. Um, So... I think we're in a situation where we're going to see and we're going to need to see for Boston, you know, just down the stretch of these games, just Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are going to be the guys with the ball in their hands, you know, um, you know, run a little bit more action to make it easier for them. But off of that, be quick, be decisive, um, you know, turn the ball over a little bit less. It's been a, a, a bit of a problem for both of those guys in the series, uh, you know, and you go home. All right. 91 uh, turnovers for Jason Tatum in the playoffs. Sure. I mean, part of that is part of the whole turnover thing is like, you don't, you like the guy who has the record, you know, I think we've all seen that. Like Jason Tatum is what, like four turnovers away from setting the record for turnovers in a playoff run. Part of that is because they played two seven game series. Part of that is because it's, you know, he's the best player on the team. So he's got the ball in his hands a ton. Uh, I mean, the guy who broke the record for that was, 2018 LeBron James, and that's one of the best playoff runs I've ever seen. Yeah, they, don't have a, they don't have a point guard. Austin doesn't seen. have a point guard. Well, the two they played through the two wings. Like, those yeah. are the guys who make their primary decision makers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
for the so, I mean, it was the same thing for that 2018 Cavs team. And that 2018 Cavs team played two seven-game series as well uh, in the first round in the Eastern Conference Finals. So it's that it's 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 not like it's not the catch-all like sign of bad things that people think it is. Just in general, um, and this is a quick aside, uh, the players that set the stats for like most most bad things are kind of like what you might consider futility are always like really good to elite players. Like, uh, this is a trivia question for you. Who has the uh, who holds the NBA record for most missed shots in a career? Kobe. Ding ding ding. <laughs> and I mean, we Kobe Bryant was Kobe Bryant, you know. So it's you don't get to be you don't get to keep turning the ball over and missing shots if you aren't great at what you do. That's how that goes. Mm-hmm. Um, but for, from to answer your question and go back to that from the Warrior standpoint, I think you want to see better from Jordan Poole. Um, baddies in the front row. Yeah. <laughs> put the baddies in the front row. Convince the baddies to stop letting them get ran through on defense. <laughs> That that's that that's what you got to do. Maybe I know he likes Zendaya or whatever. Put her on the front row and tell her to tell tell her to tell him to get in the stance, and maybe he'll guard somebody. I don't fucking yeah. know. Um, I think you want to see better from him on defense, though. It's it's primarily defense. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to agree with you on all accounts. Um, I think Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown needs to play better. Um, purely from the offensive end. I mean, you can make a legit argument that Boston should be up 3-1. The fact that they're not up 3-1, and right now this series is dead even at 2-2, and it's the best of three, Golden State has to have some type of advantage right now. They took they seized back home court. Um, they have the next potentially two games are in their home. Neither one of these teams has lost back-to-back games in the playoffs. It's going to be very interesting to see um, what happens. I believe tonight's winner wins the NBA title. Um, And it's going to be, to me, it's going to be a hell of a game. Um, From the Warriors' standpoint, I'm going to agree with you again. I think Jordan Poole needs to show up. Um, I think he's due for a 20, 25-point game. Um, At least one of these games, hopefully, is tonight. I, I I also will add Clay Thompson in there. I think Clay Thompson is due for a game six. Clay maybe it happens in game five, um, but we need that version of Clay Thompson. Steph needs more help, um, and I know Wiggins is in double figures. Jordan Poole is in double figures. Clay Thompson is in double figures, and we were comparing that to when LeBron had to carry twenty fifteen. Uh, he had J.R. Smith who was in double figures, but I believe. His other players were in single digits. So Steph has a little more help than LeBron had in 2015. Um, But he still needs them to show up when it matters the most. Steph carried the Warriors to that game four. Steph refused to let Golden State lose that game. And I, I hate to say it, but he can continue to put up those type of numbers and Boston still wins. They and, almost did the last game. And, and that is, if, if I'm going to state, that has to be the alarming sound that I'm paying attention to. If Steph Curry just had a Hercules effort, he just put had his best finals performance in his entire career, and we barely slid through the cracks with a win. That's a sign to Draymond, you need to play better. Clay, you need to be, you need to play better. Jordan Poole, you have you guys have to step up and play. Better. I don't know why Steve Kerr, and this is this. I don't know why he's not playing Kaminga. Um, maybe he's he 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 he's not ready. But he has six fouls. He's a big body. The defense is still an issue with Kaminga. Yeah, but he's nineteen, he, he's 19 years old. Um, generally speaking, uh, nineteen year olds are not good at defense. Yeah. Um, it's not the on ball defense. It's the off ball defense. It's the off ball defense. Yeah. And like, there's there's still some of that with him having watched him throughout this season. Mm-hmm. Super high ceiling. He's probably gonna end up being a a, a star, but you know, mm-hmm. absolutely. So I I think game five, whoever wins this game will win the series. Um, and we are less than four minutes away from tip off of game five of the NBA Finals prediction time. Tunde, who wins game five? And Ah, sorry. I want to say 
I was I was thinking if I wanted to add a caveat, who 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 wins game five and what player's the reason that team wins game five? All right. Uh well, I won't bury the lead here, Donald. Boston will win game five. Uh I would also like to point out that when this series started, I said that the order of uh these games were gonna go. <clears throat> Boston Golden State, Boston Golden State, which is what has happened so far in four for four. I should have put a parlay down on this shit or something. I'd be rich at this point. So you you still think it's Boston and you think it's still Boston and Boston? Five and I still think it's Boston and six. But yeah, my I thought that they would trade the first four games and then Boston will win the last two. Okay. I still feel that way. Um, so I'm yeah I'm gonna pick Boston tonight in game five. I'm not going to single out one guy. Uh, I know this probably doesn't quite answer the question the way uh, you were hoping for. It. I apologize for that. Uh, I think that if Boston wins this game tonight, it's going to come the way that uh, a lot of the way it's coming the other games, which is, you know, you get 15 points from Grant Williams. You get Al Horford punishing switches when they put a small on him. Marcus Smart plays great defense and scores 17 points. Like Jalen Brown scores like 25. Jason Tatum scores like 24 and plays phenomenal defense and sets everybody up with open looks. Derek White scores 12 and, and scores on the in-between game and makes his catch and shoot. It's going to look something like that. That's kind of what I envision. Mm. Um, I, I see Steph going off for another 30-point explosion. Um, Probably. <laughs> um, I question how efficient he will be because I expect Boston to make little changes to their defense. But the way that we both were talking, we're really not expecting Boston to change anything. If that's the case, Steph is going to be, he's going to end this finals 50, 40, 90. That's he's crazy. Going to, he's going to be one of the handful of players that has, that is average over, assuming he's going to average over 35 points and he's going to be 50, 40, 90. I mean, that's, that's like, we got to, again, we just got to stop and appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> Absolutely. I think LeBron did that. I think at the top of my head, I think Kevin Durant did that. I believe LeBron did that one of these years. I'm pretty sure LeBron did that. Um, but I don't, maybe not. I, I don't know if he shot 50, per, uh, 50%, well, 40% from the three. I have to go back and check. Um, but I'm sure Kevin Durant did that. Um, but just have to marvel and appreciate um, what we're seeing from these in, in these NBA finals from Steph Curry. Um, there has have been a lot of top ten talk, and you know we were having a discussion in the group chat. I was in here cooking while you guys were just coming at me from my top ten. I'm like, what, did it, what is all these text messages coming from? I'm like, oh, they're talking about the top 10 that I made. To be um, clear, this man on the list that I saw, and I know you, uh, you've already corrected this in the group chat. You're still wrong either way. Uh, but this man had LeBron James originally at four, now revised to be at three. That was a mistake. Uh, that, I, I don't know how I made that. When I, when I was going through my, like, in my head, when I was writing it down and I was looking up all the information I need to look up, I had LeBron at three. I don't know how him and Magic got flipped, but I... I've always been yep. consistent, Magic, Kareem, LeBron. I've always been consistent with those three. When you, you get you I, are Michael, like Jordan, right? Yeah. You said Magic. I just want to make sorry. sure. Yeah, Michael, um, Michael, Kareem, LeBron. Um, sure. I've I've always been consistent with those three. Now, when you get past five, it becomes tricky to me. Um, sure. It, you throw Steph in there. Um, you got Oscar. I mean, you got Bird. I don't know necessarily who you put in there i'm going to personally check out larry bird um because i think steph impact on the game has been greater although we're talking about larry bird who was a white guy magic was a black guy and all of that stuff having to do with you know bringing the lead to where it is right now had a significant impact on the where we are now in the league but 1000% i just don't think that makes them better players than some of the people other people on the list absolutely that's why i had a hard time doing it but sure. out of respect i think steph is better than bird and me too uh I, larry bird is a tough one for me i'm not one of those people who's gonna sit here and like super slander larry bird 
He was a hell of a basketball player who I think had a play style who would have fit in just fine in today's era. Absolutely. Like if he, Larry Bird shot two threes a game. If he played in today's era, he would take a lot more than that. He would have been just fine. Um, with that being said, I, I'm somebody who values, you know, like at your prime, you know, where were you in the league and at your peak, where were you in the league mm-hmm. above all else? Um, but Larry Bird kind of stretches that for me because, you know, compared to the other players who we tend to have, you know, think top 10, top 15, he only, he played 12 years, which is a, you know, that's a relatively short time period for Mm -hmm. these lists. Mm -hmm. Um, In the last few years, he was, you know, the back was, his back was a huge problem and he wasn't quite the same guy. And so it's, it's a little tough to figure out like, where do you want to put him? Um, we Maybe we have different conversations if he just, you know, hired somebody to shovel his mom's driveway and didn't fuck his backup. But uh, <laughs> he did. So here we are. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I don't know that we have time to get in all of it. Like I have a lot. I have lots I want to say about uh, Kim Olajuwon, for instance, who needs to be in the top 10. He was absolutely a top 10 player and should be higher than Larry Bird on these lists. I, I, I agree. I just don't know. It's, I mean, real quick, we'll be we, five minutes, guys. We're, we're going we're gonna to indulge this in five minutes because we're going to be talking about this throughout the entire summer, uh, especially if Curry, somehow the, the Golden State wins this championship. We're going to have different conversations. But just off the top of my head, I can say uh, in no particular order, uh, we're going to go uh, Michael, we're going to go Kareem. We're gonna go I'm not Ron. doing that. You are. No, me, I am, yeah. <laughs> Uh, sure. LeBron, then we got Magic 4, Kobe 5. Then you got Duncan 6, Shaq 7. I think Wilt 8. I'm going to say, I'm going to say Wilt, um, Steph in there at 9. And then it was um, Bill Russell, 10. So I didn't, I just, in any order. Those are the 10 that I, I know those are the 10 players I have. The order may be wrong, but those are the 10 players that I had in my top 10. I don't, I don't know where you, I mean, do you substitute Oscar for like Russell or like Wilt or like, because to me, to me, Steph is better than Oscar. So where do you, where do you go with, where do you go with Oscar? Like, who do you, who are you I'm fine with that and did I, I might've missed that. I think you mentioned Shaq, right? Shaq. Yes. He's in there. Okay. Yeah. So for me, um, so for me, just like, Shaq and Hakeem Olajuwon are the same, like the same level of player. That's the same tier. I don't think you can have one in your top 10 and the other is at like 12. I don't really, like for, for me personally, that doesn't work. Uh, Hakeem Olajuwon was a defensive player of the year who was giving people like 25 a game. He was special. He was a top 10. He's a, he's a top 10 all-time great. I think he gets very disrespected on these lists. Personally, I get yelled at for this a lot. It's all good. They called me a madman. I don't give a fuck. Uh, <laughs> Tim Duncan is higher than Kobe on my list. I think that Nike, I think Nike did a great job with wow. some of it. Um, uh, long, you know, rest in peace and all. Uh, but I think Nike did a great job with some of this stuff. I think if you look at their careers, like if you just like if you just look at accolades, and I know the accolades aren't always right, but if you just look at accolades. Like Tim Duncan, absolutely. If you just talk about is, where, where is this like? There's where is the separation? And I know, I know, like the list you sent, you had them right next to each other. So this isn't really directed at you. Uh, more, it's more directed towards the larger basketball community. Yeah, uh, I had Tim Duncan at six, I believe, and Kobe at five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this isn't this isn't a comment directed at you. Yeah. I just want to make that clear. Yeah. But um, like, there's people normally they'll have like Tim Duncan at like ten and Kobe at like three. Um, I don't get that. Like they, yeah. they had very similar careers. Tim Duncan was like an effective player. If we're being really honest, like the last three years of Kobe's career, like it was like yeah. he stopped being an effective basketball player once he tore his. But can, but can we acknowledge that Tim Duncan averaged nineteen points a game? Like for a career for a career. Sure. Tim, Tim Duncan averaged nineteen point two points a game in his entire career. Kobe is a 25 point game score and for his career. So if we're really, if we're going to, what the top 10 is, is a nitpick. We're, we're nitpicking now. 
We're nitpicking these guys. We're trying to figure out what can we pull out from individual players to put someone ahead of another person. I'm going to say Kobe's overall ability, Kobe's overall play, Kobe overall aura is better than Duncan's. It's not always about aura because Tim Duncan was with the Spurs and, you know, that's not a glamorous organization. I'm just going to say skill-wise, Kobe was better. I'm going to say footwork-wise, Kobe was better. I'm going to say Kobe is a overall better player than Duncan. And obviously, I have a hard time putting Duncan over Shaq because I believe Shaq is a better player. I think Shaq is more dominant. But, we're sure. again, we're going to get into this for like the entire summer real quick before we leave if go go ahead i'm i'm sorry i just they were both they were both like 15 they were both you know a bunch of all defense teams i think if you're a dunking guy like i am in this scenario the defense. you're, you're going to point to there was a point to the fact that he was probably more impactful defensively not that Absolutely. kobe wasn't a great in player prime, in, in, in his prime i think kobe was a better defender if we're sure talking about overall, we're gonna talk about overall career. I will, I will agree with you with Duncan. But if we're talking about, go ahead. I don't, I don't disagree. I, I mean, I think that's fair. I also think it's tougher to judge that sometimes with people because we can see somebody like Kobe Bryant who guards the ball on the mm-hmm. perimeter, and people don't see, like people don't understand like rotations to help defense. So mm-hmm. that's, I think, part of why the defense thing with Duncan falls by the wayside, mm-hmm. um, even though it shouldn't because you know he was great at it. But like, I feel like we we just people just skate on past the fact that Tim Duncan won two MVPs and Kobe won one MVP. Yeah, like that, like that just doesn't like that just doesn't matter. Yeah, they Tim have, Duncan. Like, they played in the league at the same time, the yeah. same careers, like the like they their their years matched up and everything. They retired roughly at the same time. Tim Duncan won more MVPs than Kobe, and people were just like, anyways. Yeah, like, but. But yeah. one thing that I never understood was why people, it seemed like as the generations, you know, as new generations come in, we we don't appreciate Duncan more. Like it seemed like he moves further and further down the list every generation. So that's not a, that's not a knock on us because we know how great Tim Duncan was. Um, but I know he's a two-time funny. I know he's a five-time champion. He's a two-time MV, regular season MVP. But I, I know all his accolades. I know the defense is accomplished. I know the, uh, the for all team uh, accomplishments. I know what his resume is, but I still believe Kobe was cheated at least one of those MVPs. And sure. to, to this day, I never understood how Shaq has one and Kobe has one and Steve Nash has two. That's a whole different story. I think Steve Nash, I think I was fine with Steve Nash winning one of those. I was too. Uh, not both, Especially not- the one where they won like 67 games. I think my issue, I, I would have been fine with Kobe winning one of those, but uh, this is another one of, I don't think this is a hot take, but a lot of people do. I think that um, the MVP that Kobe actually did win should have went to Chris Paul in 2008 when Chris Paul had averaged like 20, 22 and 12 and was first team on defense. Probably should have won that MVP. So I'm like, I'm roughly fine with where Kobe ended up. You at least think you, 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 you at least think he should have got one. You you at least think he should have got one though. Even I'm saying he got I cheated one or he didn't get, he didn't deserve the one that Chris Paul got. But you believe he should have won. I'm saying yeah. What I'm trying what I'm saying is that he should have gotten one of the ones he didn't get. But I also don't think he, he should have got the one, one that he got. That he did. <laughs> to be fair, I have this opinion about other people. Like I don't think Derrick Rose should have won MVP the season he won it. It should have gone to. Probably should have gone to LeBron or Dwight Howard. Nobody was going to give it to LeBron that year because everyone hated him. No. But I also think that LeBron uh, should have like six MVPs. If you want well, to be I also team. don't think LeBron should have won MVP in 2009. I think Dwayne Wade should have won that MVP. Ooh. So like, it's not, it's not like a, it's not just like a linear thing. I think they made some mistakes in a few of those places. Like I think LeBron probably sure four or five MVPs somewhere in there. But like yeah. I think one one maybe he shouldn't have gotten it, and he's lost at least one where he should have gotten. It. Yeah, I see. I think we can make uh, we can go down a list honestly, and we can make those cases. Like I think Nikola Jokic should have not. He shouldn't have won MVP this year. I thought it was Joel Embiid. Um, it's hard to, for me to believe that Giannis <laughs> should have won that second MVP um, because voters get this fatigue and this tiredness, and. 
I don't, they don't like to, vo- I don't think they like to vote for the same person numerous times. To me, no, Steph Curry, it was a highly debate if Steph Curry should have got that first MVP. Um, James Harden, in my opinion, was a close, close, close second. I mean, it was literally a pick em. Now, obviously, he won unanimous MVP the second time. It, was, it wasn't even close there. But that first one was, I don't know, it's teeter-totter. I mean, he averaged 23, 20, 24 and a half points. Uh, somewhere in that range for that first MVP. So, I mean, uh, I, I see why he got it. But then, obviously, I think some MVPs are not even questionable. Like, Steph was clearly the best player, the one he won the unanimous MVP. Now, maybe right. that didn't translate in the finals. He was the regular season best player. He didn't finish the job in the finals. But he was clearly the best player in the regular season. He had the um, best season in the regular season. He, he wasn't had the, the best, best season. One of the he best seasons. The, one of the best seasons that I've ever seen in NBA history. Absolutely. Uh, so I, would, I would definitely rank that top three. It's the best season I've ever seen from a guard. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but again, guys, we're going to be getting into these top 10 debates all summer long. I have one more quick question for you, Tunde. Yeah, what's up? If Steph Curry wins this title, with the MVP, does he crack your top 10? He's probably, I, I, to be honest, I would have to sit down and really go make a list to, yeah. to, to see where I'm at. There's a decent chance he's already in there. So, <laughs> gotcha. I got you. We will yeah. leave it there. Um, enjoy game five, guys. We will be back for post game coverage. All, all NBA finals, all game five of the NBA finals. Tune in. We will have Chaz back for the post-game coverage. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and our Spotify account. All you got to do is type in Spoken Truth Podcast in your search engine. You can follow me on Twitter at Danny Murphy Jr. One. And you can find me on Twitter at King Two Day 25. Peace. Peace. Stop this. I, how do you stop this?